ICCW is a place to ideate, nurture, and translate disruptive technologies for sustainable clean water. The sprawling 21,000 square feet facility is located at the IIT Madras Research Park and is the brainchild of Professor D. Pradeep of IIT Madras, a Padma Shri 2020 awardee by the Government of India. With over a decade of proven experience in tackling water contamination issues with homegrown nanomaterials, the need for a comprehensive center for water that caters to the world was visualized. With initial funding and support provided by H.D. Parekh Foundation, the center was inaugurated on April 22nd, 2019. ICCW will help anyone to translate a worthy idea on clean water to a viable technology. The incubation ecosystem of IITM will work in tandem with the intellectual and material resources of the institution to enable this translation. ICCW has highly trained and talented people, houses some of the world's most sophisticated and modern equipment, and is open to stakeholders from all over the world. ICCW has seven state-of-the-art laboratories, an incubation hub for startups, a pilot production facility, and access to expertise of the ICCW team, IITM faculty, and our worldwide collaborators. Companies in the water sector are invited to join our consortium for speedy product development and technology validation. IP sharing and startup support is also available. ICCW consults on water management studies and implements water saving solutions in partnership with emerging and eco-friendly technologies. Solutions are available for fluoride, arsenic, and iron removal, TDS reduction, and atmospheric water harvesting. ICCW implements these technologies through CSR funds with a five-year maintenance option it conducts workshops and interactive sessions involving all stakeholders on topics of relevance to clean water, such as RO reject management, rainwater harvesting, grey water management, low cost sensors, etc. ICCW works as a medium to link clean water research to the global community. ICCW is a non profit entity registered as a society under the governance of IIT Madras. It exists to serve the world and its inhabitants. It needs the participation of corporate houses and philanthropic organizations in projects that will make the world water secure. Contributions can be made through IIT Madras, which come with a 100% tax exemption. These contributions will make a lasting impact on the society. Logging on the Logging on the Good evening, Mr. Shivkumar. Welcome back. Thank you.
availability of fresh water determines the future of nations. Every part of the world has specific issues limiting the access to safe water. Advanced research is essential to ensure water security. Born out of this need is the International Center for Clean Water, ICCW. ICCW is a place to ideate, nurture, and translate disruptive technologies for sustainable clean water. The sprawling 21,000 square feet facility is located at the IIT Madras Research Park and is the brainchild of Professor T. Pradeep of IIT Madras, a Padma Shri 2020 awardee by the Government of India. With over a decade of proven experience in tackling water contamination issues with homegrown nanomaterials, the need for a comprehensive center for water that caters to the world was visualized. With initial funding and support provided by H.D. Parekh Foundation, the center was inaugurated on April 22, 2019. ICCW will help anyone to translate a worthy idea on clean water to a viable technology. The incubation ecosystem of IITM will work in tandem with the intellectual and material resources of the institution to enable this translation. ICCW has highly trained and talented people, houses some of the world's most sophisticated and modern equipment, and is open to stakeholders from all over the world. ICCW has seven state-of-the-art laboratories, an incubation hub for startups, a pilot production facility, and access to expertise of the ICCW team, IITM faculty, and our worldwide collaborators. Companies in the water sector are invited to join our consortium for speedy product development and technology validation. IP sharing and startup support is also available. ICCW consults on water management studies and implements water saving solutions in partnership with emerging and eco-friendly technologies. Solutions are available for fluoride, arsenic, and iron removal, TDS reduction, and atmospheric water harvesting. ICCW implements these technologies through CSR funds with a five-year maintenance option. It conducts workshops and interactive sessions involving all stakeholders on topics of relevance to clean water, such as RO reject management, rainwater harvesting, grey water management, low cost sensors, etc. ICCW works as a medium to link clean water research to the global community. ICCW is a non profit entity registered as a society under the governance of IIT Madras. It exists to serve the world and its inhabitants. It needs the participation of corporate houses and philanthropic organizations in projects that will make the world water secure. Contributions can be made through IIT Madras, which come with a 100% tax exemption. These contributions will make a lasting impact on the society. Good afternoon to you all. Good evening, good morning, namaskar. I am Sripati, an expert engineer as a part of ICCW, IIT Madras. I'm very glad that we are at the moment with 250 participants along with us in this webinar series on rainwater harvesting. Today we have the pleasure of inviting Shri Vijay Raj of Rainy Filters, a product that has been uh, used widely by the Indian rainwater harvesters, so, so to say. So before we hear a lot from uh, Mr. Vijay Raj, 
may I have the pleasure once again to invite Professor Pradeep to say a few words and inaugurate the session for the day. Thank you, Professor. Over to you. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Good morning, wherever you are. <laughs> it is always a pleasure uh, to welcome speakers of eminence amongst us. And today, we are on the third day of this very important series. I spoke about water in the past uh, few days. Today, I thought I will speak about an important aspect that is about the unsung heroes of the nation. Water, as I had been talking about, water does not belong to you and me. It belongs to this world because we don't make any fresh water molecule on the planet. We only recycle. There is no H2 plus O2 reaction going on at atmospheric temperature and pressure, making fresh water. It is always recycled. This water, we are enjoying this water the boundless power of this precious resource because of unsung heroes who have been practicing water harvesting in very many ways in different parts of the world. We have collected some of them together in this webinar series. First day, we had Mr. A.R. Shivakumar. Second day, we had Dr. Rajendra Singh. Today, we have Mr. Vijay Raj. We continue on, we will have more people and many unsung heroes of the nation are in fact joining on this webinar from different parts of the country. What I want to tell you is that in rainwater harvesting, there is something that each one of us can do. It does not require technology. It does not require academic prerequisites. It does not require a large financial investment. It just needs some action. And yesterday we saw how that action can transform the world. What I want to tell you is that I have seen very many of these action heroes in different parts of the country, but we don't celebrate them. One way to take rainwater harvesting to people is to celebrate these individuals, their enormous passion for water. For example, Shivakumar was telling us that he is, he has been living on rainwater for 20 plus years. Celebrate these heroes. And once we have that culture of celebration of issues of this kind, of people of this kind, of ideas of this kind, of technologies of this kind, of practical implementations of this kind, we will create a culture of rainwater harvesting. And one other thing that is important for many of you to know is that it is not only service. 
good service has also a good possibility of business. Water is not only good, but it's also good business. It is something that you can do. And with that, you can have a living too. And therefore, today's talk is even more important in this context of COVID confined situation that many people are looking up to opportunities. You look at the country. I just was talking about 1.5 million schools in the country. They all need rainwater harvesting. But I'm so glad that this person, I was told, has been instrumental in having rainwater harvesting installations, not just one or two, 1,68,000 or so. So this is enormous passion, tremendous energy. And this has to replicate. And that is how India will transform. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for the um, uh, enlightening, I would say, the introduction to this session where you said good service is not only good service unless it is a good business potential. And I believe uh, uh, Mr. Vijayaraj has seen, the, uh, seen both the sides of good service as well as good business potential also in his endeavor of doing several rainwater harvesting installations across this country. Now may I invite Mr. Vijay Raj to share his screen and share his thoughts on his ideas and the implementations that he has done across this country. And uh, we will follow it up with a small question answer session at around uh, uh, 550, that is 550 PM, so that we get into some good questions and, uh, and uh, you know get some answers as well. Over to Sri Vijay Raj, please. Good evening, everybody. Yesterday and day before yesterday, we had eminent speakers who, gave, who enlightened us about the benefits of the rainwater harvesting. Today, we'll be speaking more about the implementation part. What are the precautions we need to take during implementation? How do we recharge our dried bore wells? How do you use our dried bore wells as a you know, recharging source and convert them into a recharging shafts? Now, as you all know that India is water starved today, though we get an average annual rainfall of 1,170 mm, still there is water shortage everywhere. Why is this so? In the year 1947, when we had a population of just 30 crores, the per capita availability of the water was 5,000 meter cube. Today, with 1,130 plus crores population, or per capita availability of the water has gone down to about 1,500 meter cube. And anything below this will be a distress. So we are at a crucial junction wherein we don't, if we all don't join hands and do something about it, you know, we will be uh, heading towards a water-starved country. In India, we have always worshipped water. Here, Jal is Jagdish. And around the world, everybody is talking about water saving today. Though water saving, you know, rainwater saving is not a rocket science, but if not implemented properly, why it is, you know, though it is being such a wonderful thing, why it is not implemented everywhere? You know, it was declared that shortly about 17 countries in the world will be, you know, water distressed. India is one among them. Though we get about 4,000 billion meter cube of rainwater on this land and another 4,000 billion liters, billion cubic meters come from you know, ice melting as well as you know, international from the international waters. Still, we are facing a huge crisis in water. In, in India, every year we extract more than one and a half times of the water from the groundwater than we are recharging. All dams 
you know put together or all lakes dams and all the water storing you know structures put together we are still could save only 250 billion meter cube liters of water and rest all is going as waste if we take recharging site we are able to recharge only 450 billion cubic meters whereas extraction is estimated to about 715 billion 750 billion so we are extracting you know one and a half times more than what we are uh, recharging these have resulted in about 6500 critical and dark zone blocks in india on an average we get about 45 days of rainfall pan india and there we get about 90% of our rainfall comes in this 45 days in this uh, uh, we want to uh, uh, stress upon more on agriculture or water uh, harvesting because 65% to 70% of the our water is been used by agriculture the domestic and the industrial uses compared to that is very limited so you know it is more we have to give stress so that you know we save lot of water in the agricultural fields in the agricultural area where we recharge their bore wells construction of the ponds you know construction of the open wells which has been forgotten our you know age old knowledge which was you know very uh, more important link in the recharging we have forgotten the open wells which has led to the disaster also and the storage like you know building of anecards and all those things which were discussed yesterday and day before yesterday just to give an example how the things can change you know just to and because you know if we talk of water israel is the first thing that comes to us israel was just found in year 1935 and two third of its land is dry or of with, which gets very minimal rainfall and one third is the marshy land with just 100 mm of rainfall with the strategy to use the rain water to reuse the water and to reduce the consumption today they are in a position to supply they have got surplus water which can be supplied to jordan and syria if they can change the things we with 1170 mm of annual average rainfall we can do wonders only thing is you know where we have forgotten our knowledge you know our you know forgotten knowledge our forefathers were far far more wiser than us because if you take any temple in the country we have got one temple temple tank all the water used to come and be stored and this was available for us in the distress and this has been in the same case why then it has not been so popular if rain water has got such a beautiful reputation or the water is such a fantastic water why rain water has been not very popular in india why everybody has not been implementing rain water now to give the, what is the potential of the rain water i'll be taking example of bangalore because it is lot of research and we have got eminent persons like dr shiv kumar who have been putting lot of efforts in you know educating people and uh, doing lot of research on this city uh, for bangalore uh, we are taking and this is the same scenario in every city you know because bangalore we have got data is available i'm sharing with you and it can be replicated in the same city and it you know talks about the same city Uh, same scenario in every cities urban cities in bangalore the water comes uh, from kaveri from about 108 kilometers we get about 1250 mld of water every day the water has to be pumped for about 1000 feet height and every day we spend about 13 crore plus on electricity bill alone forget about the capex and all uh, required to pump uh, make these kind of structures and uh, we remove they say about we get about 450 to 500 uh, million liters from the ground so it comes to about more than as uh, about 1600 to 1650 mld of water which is required for bangalore every day just theoretically if you assume that if bangalore is covered with a plastic sheet just whole bangalore is covered with a plastic sheet and the amount of the rainfall that is falling on that means we generally get about 980 ml of uh, mm of water the amount of the water that falls on that plastic sheet if it is stored recharged and reused we don't need any kaveri at all you know we can supply double the water that is required for bangalore about 3000 ml of water they say can be supplied to bangalore for 365 days that is the potential of the water you know rain water this can be with even 500 ml of rainfall also 
this can be replicated you know we if you are able to store means likewise what we had earlier days those days when kepagoda formed this beautiful city he had thousands of lakes around though bangalore is not an you know we don't have any much perennial rivers you know it was self sufficient and then we forgot this and as in 1970s once this borewell ikarana started everywhere we thought that borewell is the ultimate and we started drilling you know they say there are more than 22 lakh borewells you know accounted borewells in uh, bangalore alone so uh, imagine how much the things are uh, going uh, this one now coming to the uh, this one bangalore though it has been uh, uh, every every city has got a mandate that we you know we should do rainwater harvesting with the mandate still that every house with uh, about uh, uh, floor area of 2400 square feet it is mandatory that that should have the rainwater harvesting they were being pushed very hard with all the fines and all last before few months back about 15 crore rupees of fine was collected for not having done rainwater people today are ready to pay the fine but i don't know what stops them from adopting rainwater they can save on their pockets also they can save on the power also india is you know india still is a power starved country also you know we in bangalore shivkumar sir will endorse my this one we have reached about 1800 feet in some place 1800 to out of the 10 borewells that have been drilled you know out of them six borewells fail during the drilling stage only four borewells in which we get water two borewells fail in within one year only two borewells so the strike rate is only 20% still people you know bangalore is blessed or in many of the our cities our urban cities are blessed with so much of water still we are not understanding the potential of water i feel as a, because we have been implementing throughout the country i feel there are two or three reasons for this one is the poor implementation of the rainwater harvesting and then you know somewhere the filter also plays a vital role and then the uh, though we have been educating people uh, about the broader prospects of the rainwater harvesting but the fine tuning has not been done it has not reached to the man on the field you know he is not understood because i was seeing in kolkata when i had gone during you know under a metro station uh, it was raining that day and during a, under the metro station the a tanker was coming and feeding one of the hotels there and lot of water in next to his you know in front of his hotel a 6 inches pipe the whole water was gushing out you know he is paying for the water and the same water is gushing out and it's causing water logging somewhere so you know people have not applied their man though it is not a rocket science as i told you the application of the mind the application of the common sense has not been uh, done you know as uh, here you can see in this picture it is a simple uh, this one logic in the urban and the cities wherein you just interconnect all the downtake pipes bring it to a common horizontal pipe interconnect them and then put as any of the filters and leave the water to your sump overflow of the from the sump can be let into the borewell or to the open well now what happens is when you are installing uh, generally we are used to install that c clamps to the pipes but when you are installing this horizontal pipe we have to take care because when you are installing this horizontal pipe we can see here we have to prove, put the proper l clamps then the proper holding clamps which can sustain the weight of the pipe because when you are putting a horizontal pipe at the weight of the pipe and the water is on that clamping system with the new buildings coming up with the hollow blocks you know generally people have started using hollow blocks if the clamping system is not properly you know pitched in then these pipes come out we have seen that you know in one year one and a half years of the installation these pipes generally come off and the whole system has gone for a toss second is generally what happens is in the urban uh, this one areas wherever we are putting in the public domain you know in the public domain what happens is we are generally using these kind of the filters wherein you know generally the conventional kind of filters wherein all the dust debris come and settle down there and all the leaves and everything comes then settles down there so if you are not able to clean after every rainfall then they start getting decayed you know or the fine thin layer of the fine dust is formed that will you know restrict the water to flow down to the filtration uh, bed so there is regular maintenance of the because of the lot of trees and there all lot of leaves coming down every time you have to go and remove which in urban it becomes very difficult and in the public domain particularly when you are installing into the hospital schools and all they don't maintain it properly then it becomes you know obstructions you know because lot of filters they come here in every filter in india available you can find there are ball walls here 
So that dust debris, everything you have to go and open these ball walls after every rainfall or frequent cleaning has to be done to drain out all these leaves, dust and debris. So if not done, this you know this whole system gets into the trouble. So quite to the contrary, contrary you know after severe research, you know a filter has been developed which works on centrifugal force and cohesive force. And this what happens is if you can see here, all the water that enters into these filters. All dust debris, everything is thrown off, and the clean water comes on the other side. So the maintenance becomes less. Here you can see the ball wall is provided at the clean water outlet, so that you know first flush can you know you can do the first flush kind of a thing, but not in the drain water outlet, wherein you know all dust debris, everything falls out automatically. Here the advantage of this filter, one more will is first 90 seconds water always goes out. Then only then the water starts coming in. So the first flush also is taken place. Now coming to the installation part. Generally, when you are installing, as I said earlier, you know, about every one meter, these kind of L clamps has to be provided. If you can see these kind of L clamps, if it is provided, and the proper gradient has to be given. You know, if for every 50 feet, at least one feet of you know one is to 50, the gradient has to be there. If there is a sufficient gradient, there will be not be any choking of the uh, this one. And we get enough and more. Uh, height because of the water column is there. We are getting the water from uh, huge heights. If proper gradient is given, there will be never be choking up. And the selection of the pipe is very important. Here, the selection of the pipe uh, is the main priority when you are joining the pipes. You have to see what is the kind of the water we are getting. Accordingly, we have to calculate in the feed flow. Because for, on an average, we can take it as for 25 mm, one square feet of roof area, we get about two, li two liters of water. So if you have got 1,000 square feet of roof area, generally about 2,000 liters of water per 25 mm. But when you are designing the system, always it is better that we take the intensity of the rainfall at 50 mm. And you know, all, if you have got a 50 mm of the rainfall, the whole system should be able to sustain. Then only what happens, implementation becomes you know easy and sustainable. We have seen implementation, which we have implemented 20 years back also. Today also they are working fantastically well. So the implementation, one is you know, the uh, diameter of the pipe, and we have to calculate about 50 mm of the rainfall. So means one square feet, we have to take as four liter, we'll be getting in 25 mm of rainfall. And the tank size. Generally, according to the international standard, 50 mm of the rainfall, if you have got 1,000 square feet, four liters into, you know, four liters of uh, per square feet, so into 1,000 square feet, about 4,000 liters. So maximum tank means minimum tank size we require is at least 4,000 liters of the tank for the rainwater harvesting. Generally in Bangalore, we have seen that you know people are using all uh, the regularly existing sump only. They are getting fil they are filtering the water, putting this water to the existing sump only. From there, overflow is sent to the uh, bore wells. Likewise, uh, we have to de design the tank size. Here, many of the states now have awakened for the rainwater harvesting and they have started giving one of the first states to announce the subsidy for rainwater harvesting, piping, as well as the filters was Bhuvaneshwar and Orissa, wherein you know, each and every house was paid 45,000 rupees as subsidy to implement the rainwater. We installed more than about 2 lakh uh, installations over there. You know, with our uh, wide network of the, you know, and we train plumbers also. So, you know, they they have implemented more than two lakh uh, installations uh, in the Bhuvaneshwar. And coming back to the, you know, agriculture field, generally what we see is, you know, in per acre of land, just 25 mm, we get one lakh liters of water. Out of that, 20 to 30 percent populates. Rest all goes as, you know, runoff water. During runoff water, there is one more uh, you know, loss we are incurring because when the water runs off, it is taking the topmost soil also. The, so the farmer is you know, deprived of the top soil also. The top fertile soil is also going on. If you are able to you know, do the rainwater harvesting it properly in the farm, it doesn't cost much. With you know, minimal uh, investment, they can do rainwater harvesting. Even at 500 mm of rainfall, you know, if you take the lowest you know, so, you know, some parts, except for the few parts in Rajasthan and Gujarat, 500 mm is even in the majority of the areas of Rajasthan, you get about 500 mm of rainfall. So on an average, on a, an acre of land, 20 lakh liters of water is falling. Out of that, even if you take 30% as loss, still you are able to get about 14 lakh liters of water, which is going. If you are able to save this water, because if you take most drought area also, once in three years, you have got flooding there. So during the flooding, if you are able to, you know, push this water into the ground, then you know we can re recoup it backly. 
One of the best examples, we did it in, in Hyderabad in Gachiboli area, which is on a Deccan Plateau rocks. You know, we had the hard, hard rocks there and then water is available at more than 1,000, 1,200 feet. We installed our innovative injection well, wherein in this injection well, what we are doing is we are just bypassing this overburden, which is non-permeable zone of the clay mixed soil and you know, hard rock portion, and reach the just first permeable zone, wherein you have got fractures or cracks or sandy loam soil, and leave the water there. Thereafter, the water gets filtered through the earth crust and then reaches the aquifer, which may be deeper of 500 or 1,000 feet. So here, uh, generally, what happens is, uh, we, if you see this, uh, everywhere uh, it is advocated that you know we should make pits and leave the water. Pits is very good for subsurface recharging. If you have the open wells, then if you make continuous pits, it will help you in getting the water for open wells. Subsurface will be recharged. But what has happened is, with the advent of the time and you know with the bore wells, we have forgotten open wells. Our all open wells have become you know one dust pins. If you are able to revive our open wells, we'll be able to get water in them for about eight to nine months. Only because we were not getting water for last three, four months, this well system started failing. You know, people started forgetting the wells. But now what we uh, suggest is in Bangalore, uh, or as Vishwanath always suggests that we should go for one million wells in Bangalore so that you know you can avoid the flooding as well as whole of the water table can be brought. You need not bring water from anywhere else you know, you'll have sufficient and more water here. There will be no water logging. So likewise, you know, we, uh, this uh, pits, recharging pits, what we are talking, which has been advocated everywhere, can be used for subsurface recharging. But after that, the water, even after 20 feet, 40 feet, the water doesn't percolate because we have the clay mixed soil in the majority of the areas. And then we have got rocks below. So the water is not reaching to the aquifer. It means this is not recharging our... Uh, bore wells as much because for example if we have got many lakes here which have got which are as deep as more than 30 feet 25 30 feet and 365 days there is water but in the vicinity of that lakes we don't find water the bore wells are as deep as thousand feet this means to say just by you know putting pits we are not able to recharge the bore wells here in the injection well what we do is you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, these are the injection well concept wherein you know you have got a proper silt trap system. Otherwise, what happens is when you're making a pit, when there is no silt trap system, if there is a 20 feet deep pit and which is filled with brick bats and you know, rocks and you know filtration units, the water comes and with the silt, you know, within one or two rains for all three rainfalls, there is a layer of this fine sand which fine soil which accumulates on the top and which becomes impervious. So we have seen that what lot of uh, uh, you know pits which have been done are defunct today. So what we recommend is if you have a silt trap which is you know accessible, which with the accessibility, this can be cleaned once or twice in a year, so that you know the water enters and by siphoning effect the water rises back. So the settlement is there in the silt trap and then it comes to the main in, uh, injection well or the this one, so that it will avoid choking of the main uh, uh, recharging structure. In the injection, well, what we do is after a uh, you know vertical electric sounding, a geophysical survey, we find the first permeable zone, and then we drill up to that zone, eight and a half inches that is drilled, mm -hmm. and then we provide a perforated pipe up to that. In eight and a half inches, we just provide five inches pipe, and rest space is filled with you know pebbles, and then at the entry point and the bottom point, we provide one B wire screen, which is a special component, which is flat. Uh, if you can see here. It is externally flat and internally V-shaped, so that then it, the lot of water can enter into it, but it doesn't allow sand and you know dust particles to enter because of its formation. And huge water can enter into this. This is the typical uh, injection well you can see here. The water, whichever is flowing, uh, the channels are made so that the, you can supply this water to the silt trap. From the silt trap, the water is allowed to pass into the main injection well. Here, the filtration media is only at the top. You know, we fortify this filtration media using a chlorinated activated carbon. We use charcoal, then we use you know, silica sand, then use pebbles and all. So we fortify this filtration media. And then next, this whole well is kept empty so that it can store the water and then the slowly the water can percolate. This act as a, we call it as injection well because that that it will create that kind of water column because of its height. It creates that kind of water column which helps in pushing the water into the deeper layers. So when you measure this uh, you know, pressure at the bottom of about, uh, then we have about four to five hours of pressure 
which can push this water into the dry zone or this one. And then of, thereafter, it gets filtered through the earth crust and go into the deeper aquifer. This is, we have installed more than 18,000 injection well in last about 18 years we have been doing it. It has been very well accepted and you know, it, next to the drinking water borewells, about 18 to 25 feet, depending upon the geological geologist uh, advice, it has been drilled. You know, many of the drinking water borewells in government of Karnataka's rural drinking water scheme has been adopted by this technology and it has been very successful. Uh, you can see here, and this is a typical picture of how this uh, uh, injection well in the field. If you had seen this Nala, otherwise would have taken this water into the gradient. You can see it would have, just water would have, you know, from the, by, beside the borewell. This is the drinking water borewell here, which supplies water to a village. The water would have gone down to the low-lying area, down there somewhere. Now, what we have done is, after the proper geophysical survey, sorry, after the geophysical survey, the whole water is now allowed into the silt trap, which is constructed in the storm drain only. And there are a lot of pits which are made you know, before this, so that water comes, enters into the pit, and by the time the water is coming to this area, the water is pretty clean. This water enters the silt trap, and from here, the water goes to the injection well. And because it is in the very uh, nearby this one, and it is just allowed to go to the first permeable zone, thereafter the water gets filtered through the earth crust and go. If you take one meter by one meter of compressed earth, that compressed earth is the best filter compared to any other filters available on the earth. You know, the compressed earth, then when the water passes through that, any of the impurities left over can be filtered and then it goes slowly, you know, takes its own sweet time to reach the aquifer. By that time, the water is pretty clean. These are the first of its kind, two rigs in the world, probably. Uh, rigs are generally meant to remove the water on the earth, from the earth. But generally, these are the first two rigs developed, you know, especially designed, wherein they are the only rigs in the world which is meant only for recharging. They are being used only for recharging. Not even a single drop of water is, you know, removed using these rigs. So these are the kind of the equipments that have been specialized and developed so that, that we can go for a perfect. These are the few of the case studies uh, which we are, will be discussing, in the, both in the urban areas, in the lower areas, in the rural areas, where this uh, kind of injection well has been installed, you know, where whole of their uh, surface runoff water is uh, used. What we do is when the surface runoff water is taken, you know, we see that you know, the entry point is you know, about one or two inches, uh, depending upon the area, calculated catchment area. So that are the first few uh, mm of rainfall drains out. Only then when the water rises to the little, this one, it goes. Then a proper filtration media is uh, installed. And then the water uh, is taken care. We have seen, you know, we have seen injection wells which are able to take 3,000 liters per hour to about 2 lakh liters of injection. One, one injection well which we did uh, to a nearby village in uh, Tibegur. Then, you know, it had a potential of taking 2 lakh liters per hour. That kind of potential it was, uh, this one. And this has been installed in various, all the districts, uh, major districts of the country, uh, wherein you know, it has been proved and then it has been taken into the different. Uh, this has been particularly now used uh, for even for water logging, which will come later. This is one of the case studies uh, done for a rural uh, uh, agricultural bore, which was dried for a Betamaraya near uh, Tumkur. Wherein, uh, when we met uh, uh, our uh, as a secretary who was a secretary, Mr. Naveen Rath Singh, was the secretary for water uh, those times. And when we gave him the presentation, he said, I don't believe your presentations and all. I want a practical thing. I will give you one dried borewell. If you are able to rejuvenate that, then I will think that this uh, technology is successful. So this Betamaraya's land, he had about two acres of land. And you know, this whole, he had about three borewells. All of them had dried. His son had moved to Bangalore for working because his borewells were not working. So what we did was we took up his borewell as a pilot uh, study uh, under him. He said he will be personally monitoring uh, this system. Then we could recharge his system. with. We had a very good rainfall for uh, two seasons. And his water table with the dried borewell had water. Then we even adopted the sprinkler system and we adopted because the water table came up, we could install the solar system. You can see on the right hand side, we could install the solar system and the sprinkler system for that. If you can see only his land is green on the back side, you can see this was a photo taken in that summer. So he had a summer crop because he had enough of water. So this is how it was successful, and then thereafter, you know, he was uh, one of our uh, person who advocated uh, this uh, injection wells for everywhere, wherever he used to take the 
these are the rooftop installations wherein the you know, whole of this rooftop installation after proper filtration in an it industry has been used for drinking also you know people are have got some apprehension about the drinking but if the water is given proper treatment and then you know, pass through common means our shukumar sir has been a live example from last 20 years plus he has been using this water alone you know and his health means he is healthier than any one any one of us so uh, these are the some rural installations you know many of the rural uh, borehouses have been installed with this kind of uh, uh, this is a co in chamradnagar we installed more than about 240 injection well wherein a team from times of india visited uh, this because we had applied for uh, care award so they said we we want to visit and we want to check on the ground about team of 12 members uh, came from the and which uh, had a eminent uh, scientist uh, from ce and everybody they visited and where we had done in 2010 they visited in 2012 then they could see that only the borewells which were you know adopted by you know vivar injection well because the those uh, two years were the drought uh, there and uh, there was a very uh, scanty rainfall so only those borewells which had this injection well well were working so in this we got then uh, you know earth care award and when uh, uh, times of india was even awarded as 5 lakh rupees cash prize for this uh, this one this whole thing you know the whole majority of the villages uh, they adopted and then they were extended so this has been tried and proved uh, now in what happens is in the generally in the urban areas you see these are the software companies wherein you know they had lot of water moving out of their campuses because there are huge campuses which are about 300 acres 400 acres sometimes lot of water move out of their campus because all majority of them are they have got more than 10 20% of the paved paved areas then they have got buildings and then the rest is open area but still there because of the uh, lot of movement of the water uh, there used to be huge uh, uh, this one so we have installed this vivar screen in this areas also then recharge one of the uh, it sites in chennai there 40% with 25000 seats their 40% of annual requirement is wet by rain water that is one of a beautiful case study you know uh, in mahindra city where in 25000 seats and their 40% of annual requirement of water is met by rain water alone so that is uh, uh, this is from that side here you know you can see that what we did was uh, even their rooftop water if you see their whole of their rooftop water is brought in uh, to the piping and then they have been stored the huge tanks that we have constructed here in this campus we had constructed about 3 lakh 25000 liters tank and every rainfall of 25 mm they get about that much of water which is used for their you know ecc for their stay and their uh, rain water is stored and uh, then being used these are the low costing tanks uh, we have adopted for rain water because what has happened is now uh, you know return of investment is being also calculated in these companies so unless we are able to break their uh, return of uh, investment and the, we we have show that the return of investment it is one of the best return of investment you can get any of even compared to any of your investment gold or bank or anything we have seen that their return of investment on the huge structures like this also is 3 3 and a half years because they are buying water from outside you know their cost of water per kiloliter is around 100 to 150 rupees so they are saving the huge water cost and within 3 years they are getting their return on investment so that is one of the you can see this is a huge shed which has got you know about 3 lakh 60000 uh, square feet of roof area so every small uh, rainfall of 25 mm they get about 7 lakh liters of water you can see all these pipes have been interconnected properly you know clamped and you know proper piping size has been taken and this water comes it's so what one more thing we have to take care of this is when you are going for large installations like this we have to provide you know you know the overflow system you can see here there is an overflow system this is very much important because what happens is one is that it will act as you know air blockage if there is a, there will be because when you are running pipe of about 1 km 2 km lot of air blockages will be there or even if you are crossing 100 feet there needs to be a air vent so if you are able to provide these kinds of you know overflow pipes this will act as air vent also and also you can see this is you know it is raised above little and then it is load again so uh, whenever there is a heavy downpour because recently it had it happened that in 3 hours we got about 104 mm of rainfall in those kind of situation or there if there is a cloud burst and all this water can you know will not damage the pipe and at least this water can you know this is a safety uh, system that should be adopted in each and every installation for a small amount it is okay 
we have another five more minutes for uh, the presentation yes sir yes sir so this is also one of the factories one more factory where you can see uh, all the water is brought into you uh, know one chamber jackwell system from the jackwell system it is you know pumped these are the bigger kind of filter which are about 500 meter cube 100 meter cube you know 5 lakh liters of water can be pumped in one hour that kind of uh, filters are custom made by us and we can use it for this you know this is you know, one of the garments factories wherein they had a water crisis today they are water you know self sufficient you know we are using uh, we are putting water meters you know which are the crucial part of our installation because anything which can be measured can only be saved uh, so you can see this water meter has been installed and we we try to use lot of hdp pipes you know because uh, you know their durability is their life is more than 40 years and they are non carcinogenic and this you can see the air vents here I have shown you this because you know easy installation. Once the clamping system and the air vent system, and if they are in place, nothing can happen. You know a system can run up to 40 years without any intervention. Here on the this right hand side, you can see the jackwell system, wherein all the pumping system is there with all the precautionary measures, wherein this pumps uh, the water to the filtration system, and uh, from these are the customized filters. Uh, for the larger areas and then this water can and then when you have got a uh, smaller areas you can have the parallel filters you can install a lot of parallel filters like this and then you can run into a main line and then water can be let into the and we have installed more than in karnataka alone 3600 schools we have installed here what we have done is if you can see there is a pump system hand pump these are hand pumps we have made a tank below and here we said that you know you should, children should earn water not get water only when they earn water, they will be saving water. So the we installed this system with hand pump system. All of this roof water is collected through the gutter. Here, a proper clamping system is very, very important during the installation. If you don't do proper clamping, any of the beautiful system you put will be of waste. And then you have got filter, which is in under lock and key because these are in the public domain. And then you have got uh, the hand pump uh, system. These are the done in the Assam, wherein a whole rooftop water is brought and then the tank is on a stand. And then the 10, 10,000 liters tank is proposed and then filter is put at the top so that the, they can use this water. These are in the individual houses. You can see, you know, there are a lot of benefits. We have done it in the whole of the, uh, all the railway stations where they had a lot of, uh, in February onwards, they had a lot of salinity problem in their wells in that Madgaon, means that Konkan railway zone. Though they had enough of rainfall, about 3,000 mm of uh, rainfall. But what happens is after the summer season, because of the laterate uh, and you know they are uh, uh, near, nearer to the sea side, there are a lot of you know salinity ingress into the wells. So what we did was we installed this rainwater harvesting system in all of their railway colonies in the railway stations and this water was let into the well. So we could avoid a lot of seawater means salinity ingress into the wells. These are into the major factories. You can see a lot of series of filters have been adopted at the various levels and you know, on different different uh, zones. This is one of the uh, unique uh, swimming pool, indoor swimming pool in uh, one of the places in Hassan in Karnataka. Where in this swimming pool, like our Sri Kumar sir's uh, this one, doesn't have got any of the water connection. The, though it is a swimming pool, this one, though they require a lot of water, they don't have got any bore well and no connection. Only the roof water which is there, they have got 2 lakh liters of the sump they have made and whole of the water is brought and then it is uh, stored into the 2 lakh liters and they have got excess and more water which they give it to the uh, society nearby. These are the into the one the United Breweries factory. You will be surprised to know that in this, the whiskey, they use this water for making whiskey because they need not treat water because as you all know water rainwater has got very less tedious and demineralized water so for them the treatment and the wastage of the water is less so they may have made four lakh liters of tank and store this water and they're you know they're just filtering it the primary filtration they do and they're using it for their process so they are saving on huge uh, uh, processing cost electricity cost and the water wastage because what happens is when you are passing the water and making it, you know, demineralized water, huge 50% of the water goes waste, as you all know. This can be saved. And one more utility of the injection well, now it has been found in the urban areas. You can see our uh, present Bangalore commissioner, Mr. Anil Kumar. Here what happens is if you see in all the urban areas, there is a lot of water logging in the cities because we don't allow any place for percolation. So during the underpasses generally get flooded, huge flooded, and then the movement of the passenger people is a huge problem. Here you can see what we did was we installed one injection well in the underpass. 
uh, in the underpass we installed the injection well this is the seal trap this is oil and grease chamber and then uh, what happened was uh, the injection well was made so what happens is now whenever there is a rainfall there is not even a single drop of water accumulates in this injection well otherwise earlier they had to pump every time uh, when it used to rain and during heavy rainfall there was always power cut because of the tree falling and there used to be flooding and lot of loss to the life and property now with these kinds of it has been taken up as a pilot project in majority of the underpasses it has been uh, installed then it has been taken world I means you know, all over pan india these are the few, few photographs where in uh, it shown that you know it has been widely accepted at the different places we have got one research station at chikmangalore where we are training the people who want to learn rainwater harvesting because as rightly said earlier by our professor sir ki today it is a very good business opportunity and we need millions of people who become as a rainwater warriors and as a business entrepreneurs we don't need much of money today you know just they can come get trained hardly they require about 5 10 thousand rupees to start a business and they can earn a very good money you know people are making career out of this and it is in the interest of the nation also because one one plumber trained even if it does 100 houses even if you say we are saving 1 1 lakh you know one crore liter one plumber can do that we need these kind of people so we have uh, we have got a training center at our chikmangalore anybody who can be trained free of cost a research center is there we train them and we you know encourage them to take up this as a job uh, if anybody are interested kindly share our numbers they can come their home their stay their food will be taken care of they will be trained and they can come back to their cities and they can be a water warrior there they can be a rainwater person who can implement the rainwater they can you know educate the people they can be a you know mouthpiece for rainwater harvesting this is how we can solve the crisis of the india today with 1170 india cannot if anybody says today ki india will be a you know water star tomorrow i don't believe it i am very confident india will be water surplus with you know the kind of the efforts uh, our iccw has been putting and with the kind of the all the, we can see dr rajendra singh uh, shiv kumar sir everybody are putting we need now the people who can work on the ground we have to prepare the persons who can implement them so now we have to work towards that thank you all thank you all a uh, huge amount of confidence that we are not going to get the water served by any means yes sir. and excellent uh, insight on how capacity building skill development for plumbers uh, or the contractors or the helpers and operators are really required and uh, how free it, it is available free of course it is available and we urge all of the participants to get in touch with iccw and probably with you also directly to find out how this could be taken up in the next uh, coming days and weeks and b- before the uh, southwest and northeast monsoon gets uh, underway we will have to start working on it and get something useful immediately while we have a set of questions uh, uh, already lined up from several of our uh, participants uh, professor pradeep do you have any specific question to uh, mr vijayraj probably let us I- let's take the questions uh, from the attendees uh, first and then we'll come back i i have uh, noted one question uh, which says that uh, if rainwater harvesting is been practiced how we can get rid of fluorosis fluorosis in the rain fed areas and the arid areas when we do rainwater harvesting as a technique or a system how do we get rid of fluorosis uh, in uh, th- these kind of areas that is uh, what- yes sir sir we have tried this uh, process in uh, in a pavagada areas uh, where we have got lot of fluorosis problem uh when uh, those that is uh, we get about uh, more than not more than 500 means 380 to 500 mm of rainfall all this water during you know selebi selected few of the borewells you know it was a case study which we can give it to you where in all this water as in the injection well next to the borewell we you know uh, pumped in lot of water and because of the dilution effect we could see the results in next two seasons even we have seen where we had lot of hard water also wherever we have installed injection well we could see the results we have checked it we have got the results wherein we have taken the water samples before recharging and the water samples during the rainfall rainy days and after recharging we could see because of the dilution effect because rain water is you know demineralized water with hardly uh, very low tds and when we are mixing with the concentrated of uh, this 
one is that one where the water is going inside when the pressure is created you know it tries to push the water means you know we have got a clean water surrounding because you know first water moves from higher concentration to lower concentration it is trying to push the water and then second because of the dilution effect we have seen lot of changes you know with uh, yes uh, area of okay. the question is it is mother's for this yes sir yes sir of course they, they, they have got a lot of examples there sir yeah the second part of uh, from the uh, q and q is do we have any other alternative rigid type of pipe pipe fixing materials uh, when we have the construction with hollow blocks ha ah, sir what we have done is we have specially designed one l clamp system with anchor bolting so then when we are using hollow blocks also uh, these uh, have been sustained actually they have sustained load up to 200 mm of uh, uh, pipes also Uh, with the 10 kg pressure gauge uh, which are very heavy pipes they have sustained so it is the l clamp system which are hot spray galvanized powder coated which has got life of 20 years so you know and aesthetic aesthetically also it will not uh, spoil the beauty of the house because the people are more worried about the aesthetics than the rain pattern so we have address both now we can uh, share a few of the picture we can share it with our, all our viewers we will share few pictures uh, where beautifully done uh, system somebody is asking how do you compare your filters with the conventional types of uh, filters that are available in the market our filters are only self cleaning maintenance free once installed for life long there is no consumables required in the conventional filters there are also very good filters but what happens is if you are able to maintain after every rainfall if you are able to go and remove all the dust and debris even they work fantastically well but in the public domain there are you are installing there is no proper maintenance in those areas what happens is our filters because they are self cleaning maintenance free all dust debris up to 250 microns automatically goes out of the system and first few seconds of water means 90 seconds of water in the first drain whenever it rains first first 90 seconds water goes out then only the water starts coming in this doesn't require any power there is no consumables required nothing to replace for next 40 years that's how they stand uh, a little uh, unique one question from professor from unas lahabad yes sir uh, what is the type materials uh, when you have pvc or iron side what is the process of contamination particularly the flue pipe when you have a such a type of piping in the rainwater harvesting systems how this contamination is avoided so generally they say that you know these recently lot of studies have gone into it ki pvc pipes using pvc pipe exposed to the sun is carcinogenic you know uh, world over if you see there are lot of people are using hdp pipes high density polyethylene pipes and which have got long durability also you know because they are uv treated you know the even if they are exposed outside they don't get uh, you know brittle or uh, you know so uv treated high density polyethylene pipe is the best alternative to the pvc pipe which are been made we have developed lightweight uh, uv treated high density polyethylene pipe generally uh, hdp pipes are heavy but we have developed first of its kind a lightweight uh, hdp pipe and they are collar system coupling system so any plumber can just couple a couple it and do it we don't need to require you know experts to do it earlier what happens hdp pipe has got lacuna because we had to heat it and butt weld it now because of the collar side collar system developed and the cost has been drastically it is with par with the pvc pipes so using hdp pipe will solve majority of the problems so, so you mentioned about the number of 1 lakh and above oh. Uh, do we have the database only available for the entire country because so many bore wells are there so many open wells are there what do we do with it uh, do we have uh, potential to reach out so many things like this is there exactly. potential to do some database search on this uh, unfortunately we don't have that kind of uh, database available <laughs> but uh, if like minded people have joined then we have got water warriors everywhere we can try and effort to do it it will, as you rightly said unless we count it we will not be able unless we measure it we will not be able to do it and there are enormous number of you know dried bore wells these are the source for our recharging because they have dried a zone because if you take in my own city i will find at least one or two lakh dried borewells 
these are already you have invested 80% of the money now only filtration system and then you know we have to put activated carbon and filter the water properly oil and grease chambers properly installed then leave this water use this as a potential instead of somebody you know they opening leaving it open and somebody falling and dying which we hear it why don't we use it as you know recharging shafts you know the tremendous potential we have Uh, is it safe to harvest uh, rainwater during this pandemic time? See, as we rightly said, what happens is uh, uh, we, it, research has to be done because in pandemic times, we, we don't know how the COVID reacts. But as far as the E. coli and other things we have done, we have done a lot of studies. Uh, because we are not going the, to the aquifer here, you know, even if the aquifer is a 400 feet, we are just uh, reaching the first permeable zone. Thereafter, as I said, water gets filtered through the earth crust. A compacted earth, earth is more, uh, you know, than any of your RO filter also. So the water, when it's uh, going, tickling, slow down, you know, it gets filtered. You know, a lot of studies we have done, a study borewells also in the agriculture field where they're using a lot of pesticides and all. We did a study borewell to study what is the impact of the water going into the that and how does it happens so you know it is safe e coli and all those other uh, parameters are safe uh, covid and all probably lot of studies still we have to go we are still in a very immature uh, stage uh, i really don't know have any well um, sripati you are asking me or i couldn't hear you professor over to you Okay, um, fantastic. Uh, your your presentation was uh, with full of energy, enthusiasm, and 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 lots of activities can be undertaken. Let me um, uh, ask a couple of things. You know what uh, you touched upon in the context of fluoride. What it obviously suggests is that water quality. in that given region has been changed and it is possible that one can reverse contamination threat you know contamination as a result of rainwater harvesting there is a need for certain systematic studies now that you have done a huge number of these installations what is the potential of such studies and what way that we can nationally say that one can reverse such water quality issues by scientific recharging exactly uh, sir we have lot of data is available with us because we have done more than 18000 borewells from the year 2002 Yeah. A lot of uh, you know more uh, studies have been done. Farmers are there who are the you know uh, have known what kind of the cropping pattern was there, how much uh, uh, you know hardness was there, how their hardness has come down, and then we have studied. Yeah, as uh, we said earlier, we have been studying few of the borewells. Study borewells are there around. So we are studying the impact uh, year by year. We have got all those data, and we welcome any of the research students who want to be with us. and do these kind of studies we can provide them lot of you know study borewells there and lot of in their places only because we have pan india presence so we can ask the students anybody who wants to do a pakka study also uh, they can very join nice. us and we will provide them all the facilities whatever is needed very nice now one of the concerns that people have been saying is that rain water harvesting is great if you do it in farm lands when water is available people go back and use their you know do their traditional agriculture maybe rice maybe cotton maybe yeah. sugar cane that is probably not the right approach uh, to follow so you along with farmland rainwater harvesting you also would be suggesting what kind of agricultural practices are required can you please comment on this Uh, we are working on this in a great way sir what we have done is we have put about 10 demo uh, working units which go from village to village and educate people we have made small videos presentable and tell them ki india has got surplus of sugar and rice and you know we cannot uh, waste water on this and you uh, know because uh, our cultivation practices are also very bad uh, the 1 kilo of rice uh, in india requires about 4 to 5000 liters of water whereas right. in china the same 1 kilo of rice is, is grown at 350 liters 
So the practices also need to be changed. So what we are doing is uh, because of these 10, 10 demo on autos, we are let it into the villages from every part of the country they are moving. By this end of year, we'll be having about 22 numbers. Wherein, you know, we have a projector screen and then we show them. See, there are two ways we have to address. One is to reduce the water consumption and second is to recharge and reuse. So this is how we are tackling but, it. Uh, farmers also have to uh, be directed to new kind of agricultural practices and probably new crops. And that is a, that's a very difficult thing for many of them to do because they have been practicing for ages. Correct, sir. So correct. What kind of mechanisms can we introduce is also a question, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here, uh, I think in a, at least in uh, making this awareness, government should play a vital role because... Right. I have one more small thing that many people have been asking about the cost. Can you please comment on the cost in terms of something like uh, units of 1,000 square feet or something? If you take uh, a small house of about 1,000 square feet or one means minimum 30 by 40, generally 1,200 square feet, the installation cost along with the pipeline filter will not cost you more than 15,000 rupees. It is one-time investment wherein, you know, uh, with the Chennai rainfall, you'll get 1,60,000 liters of water with Bangalore rainfall. Means about uh, If somebody uh, comes uh, and gives 15,000 rupees, will it be possible to implement by you? Yeah, a small house of 30 by 40 means 1,200 square feet. And also people are interested in knowing how much of, can we have, sort of, do we have Pan-India subsidy? Or only in Orissa? No, sir. Only in Orissa, there is subsidy. In Pan-India... Uh, there is no subsidy. It is unfortunate to tell you that GST on implementation of rainwater is 18%, which is very unfortunate. I have been advocating and pushing hard. Well, and we, will, we will take it to the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, I request uh, all the participants who are there to push it so that you know the cost will come down still further. In 15,000, another 1,500 can be reduced if you are able to push it to 5% at least. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. And uh, over to you, Sri Piti. Uh, I would like to apologize to all the participants with the slew of questions that you have been asking and we don't have that much of time to pose all these questions to Mr. Vijay Raj. I would uh, take this opportunity to take all these questions uh, on our uh, web platform that we have already been recording all this. We will uh, pose all these questions and get back to you uh, in the quick time possible in terms of the answers that are you know, available with us. One point is that, uh, we, uh, you know, when in, under, in asking questions, I have summarized many of those questions also. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, right now, uh, when we were uh, completing your presentation, we had around 450 participants in the uh, platform with us. And uh, we thank you, Mr. Vijayaraj, for thank your you, thank insight you, on uh, the various case studies that you have been doing. And uh, we look forward to associating with you in a long way in the coming days to... Uh, on Our pleasure, sir. Our pleasure. Now I request uh, Dr. Ramya Divedi to some session and uh, request her to say something about the update for tomorrow. Hello, everybody. And uh, I would like to thank Mr. Vijay Raj for his wonderful talk. Some more hand-holding in uh, rainwater harvesting implementation. Uh, that we have had for the past two days and you have done a wonderful job, sir. A lot of motivation to all of us. And I would like to uh, highlight one of your point where you said a message to children, earn your water. I think it is a message to the whole nation. We should get that across where we begin to respect our water. That will happen when we earn our water. So thank you once again. And uh, to brief you uh, for tomorrow's uh, talk, we have uh, Mr. Shekhar Raghavan. A uh, 48-year-old Shekhar Raghavan in 1995 was surprised to find that the water in his tap was running salty. In spite of living in coastal uh, place Besan Nagar in Chennai, he is always used to having sweet water since his childhood. He began to wonder what is happening. And that led on, led him on to a you know, journey that we call him, call it as the journey of his life. So he is a um, rain man of Chennai and I request all our participants to join us tomorrow to hear his lecture and also spread the word about this webinar series where we just not just take the learnings, but we are going to act and implement. Thank you once, and once again from ICCW team. Thank you all.
look forward to meeting you tomorrow once again